streaming. Streaming is happening. Uh, I'm going to put on some music. All right. Let's check here. Microphone seems to be working. All right, going to put on some scrolling text. Zoom call can't hear my amazing synth wave. Uh, let's get this going. There we go. Okay, I think we are live here. Hello. Uh, any anyone watching on uh, on Hello. the Twitch? Uh, can any, you hear me? Watch oh, we got a little little audio feedback. Oh, what's up? What's up, Iliac Divide? Welcome. Wow, just hanging out on the internet with some friends. Really excited to have you here. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're seeing people in the in the chat here. Oh, hey, Yufeng. Oh, wow. Look at all these first-time chatters popping off. Uh, good to see all of you. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a big Zoom call full of HCT Poetics participants here to to share some work with you. Uh, yeah, I think we can uh, get started here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Really. Uh, Excited to have you with us. Hello, hello. Oh yeah, let me get a... Uh, Appreciate you all tuning in. You know, I just started the stream and I feel like it's it's proper stream etiquette to give people a, a minute or two to to see that it's on and uh, to to roll in. Uh, yeah, maybe we can see if for for folks that are in the in the chat where where are people tuning in from. Uh, I'm coming to you from uh, rainy Brooklyn, New York. Uh, what about what about others of you in the chat? Where are you joining us from? Yeah, that's true. It should change to a spring theme. Hello, Endersverse. Oh wow! Got people from all over. Providence, Chicago, Belgium, California. Hello from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Good to see all of you. All right. I'm about ready to get us started here. Oh, gentle fade out of music. Okay. Uh, well, welcome everybody to our HTT Poetics final showcase. Uh, HTT Poetics is a class we ran here at School for Poetic Computation this uh, this past winter. Uh, I'm going to see if I can bring up our class webpage. Should have had this open already. Um, but yeah, we uh, we just finished a few weeks ago, and uh, 
this is a, an event where we're, we're hoping to share out from the, the, the students, participants in the class, some of the things we, uh, we made over these past couple, uh, couple of weeks. So uh, let me see if I can switch my view. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm a circle now. Um, uh, I'm just flying around. Hello. It's nice to, to see you as a, as a circle. Uh, I'm just uh, happy to be here on top of a web page. Yeah. HC Poetics. This is a, little bit of uh, the class everyone signed up for and uh, kind of our, our goal with this class was just to kind of explore different ways of making um, of making just small little weird websites uh, maybe getting away from uh, a lot of the baggage that comes with making a a website uh, where uh, often as artists or creative people our websites need to do this kind of impossible mix of uh, being a like public facing business portfolio for people that might want to give us money in some fashion and also uh, conveying some of our creative and artistic sensibility and also uh, uh, with whatever is left uh, conveying us some humanity and, and, and personality. And that's a, that's often a lot of weight that a single website ha has to carry. And we're trying to, in this class, uh, take a little bit of that pressure off and, uh, just kind of push ourselves to make little weird websites as as ways of uh, of sharing some writing or sharing some art, sharing some music. Um, just kind of like playing in this space and treating websites as a uh, uh, as a, a medium of their own, um, and really leaning into the ability that uh, websites make themselves uh, very easy to share with other people. It's very easy to. Uh, just put a little bit of HTML and CSS together, and then you have a thing that you can share with people all over the world. Um, oh, you can see our, our Zoom window. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry for uh, putting you on the screen before showtime, Kayla. Um, uh, cool. Uh, yeah, just want to show you a little bit of the syllabus uh, for the class, which if you want to take a peek, uh, can see here at htpoetics.glitch.me. Uh, shout out to uh, to Glitch, which uh, we used for uh, a lot of the the hosting and stuff in the in this class. Um, but yeah, sort of our, our goal here was a ten week class, and we were just trying to make uh, just have a different prompt every week to make a different kind of website, focusing on uh, on something different. So we started out with making a bad website, a website that is ugly on purpose breaking unwritten rules, uh, just really trying to uh, kind of like push ourselves outside of like what our expectations are for websites, how to look and uh, really let ourselves have fun. We looked at a lot of traditionally ugly websites. Uh, next, we made websites that were way too big that you had to scroll around and get lost in. Uh, we made websites with non-traditional navigation where you could kind of get lost and uh, have a strange sense of space as you're moving through with links. Uh, websites where things changed when you press a button uh, and as an introduction to JavaScript and interactivity, things that changed as you moved the mouse, uh, as you move the mouse over things. Um, we're, Drawn on some research from Emory Brummel Norton on uh, on the computer mouse. Uh, we did some playing with sound, where we were, uh, made websites for for listening to music or with songs. Uh, websites that connected uh, to other people, where you could see other people hanging out on the on the website, see what they're doing. Um, Oh yeah, this is also a great time to mention we had some amazing uh, guest visitors uh, do guest lectures over the course of this uh, of this class. In week three, we had a visit from Chia Amasola. Uh, week eight, we had a visit from Everest Pipkin, uh, and then uh, week nine, uh, we had a visit from the Park staff, the creators of Dumbling Love, where we talked about collaboration and uh, uh, and uh, working on a big website with a, a bunch of people all contributing things. And all that sort of culminated in, uh, we put together this class anthology here, um, which you can find at httpoeticsanthology.glitch.me. We'll be showing some pieces from it over the course of today, uh, but wanted to, uh, to give you a chance to, to look at that. If you want to follow up or see any of the things shared today, they're likely in here. Uh, some really, really fun stuff going on here. Uh, excited to uh, share some of these works with you today. Um, 
So uh, uh, we have a lot of the uh, uh, participants here on a call ready to present for you. Before we jump into it, uh, I do want to make a quick plug uh, in that this weekend is the last chance to apply for our summer classes at, uh, at SFPC, uh, including we have a, a class with uh, Everest Pipkin, uh, Worlds in Conversation, who is one of our guest speakers in uh in uh, HTT Poetics, which was really great. We also have Human Scale Natural Language Processing with Allison Parrish, Imperfect Pictures with Molly Soda, Instructional Intimacies with Maria Mona Lisa Garavi, and The Musical Web with Tommy Martinez. Um, yeah, for also if you're interested in creative website type things, uh, uh, Tommy, we, we did a little bit of entry level sound stuff with uh, uh, in in my class, but uh, in uh, in Tommy Martinez's musical web, that's a an area where you can uh, kind of push further and really make full songs and compositions and instruments uh, that just live purely online. Um, so those uh, applications are open till uh, till April fifteenth on Monday. Uh, so if you'd like to apply to our next round of classes, uh, please uh, please consider doing so. Um, Okay, so let's uh, get started with uh, seeing some presentations maybe from some of our participants. And I am going to start things over, start things off by passing it over to V for five. Let's give it up for five. And let's see if I can get my applause sound effect working. Oh yeah, there it is. Thank you, God. Um... I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so this is my website um, that I made specifically for um, a music collaboration that I do. I'm one half of a, an electronic duo called the Jehovah's and uh, yeah, I created a site for us to share our links as well as share um, a demo and a visualizer for um, a track that we released last month. So yeah, this is the homepage and when you click here, um, there's a bit of a sound piece. Um, I hope that this also smells good. Wow, who the hell Canada is amazing? Mm. I'm just gonna mute it for now as I talk. Um, but yeah, there's a sound piece that's about like trees and the land, and uh, the door also reveals um, a piece of text that is also about the land because. The Jehovah's, oh, that's the name of our musical collaboration group duo <laughs> called the Jehovah's. And uh, yeah, our work deals primarily with the land and kind of trying to restore this ancient and indigenous connection that we have with it. Um, so this text in this box is interactive and when you move your mouse around it, um, the letters transform into love hearts and yeah, it's just a nice way of making people hang around for some time. And uh, we have like two options on where to go. So I'm going to click explore first. And uh, that's going to take us to another place that's filled with links and objects. And uh, um, I kind of also want to talk a little bit about the spiritual significance of this site. Because, yeah, the Jehovah's are um, trying to connect um, authentically with the land. Um, sorry, my net is a little bit slow, so the background is still loading, but I'm sure you can still enjoy looking at what's around. Um, oops, let me go back. Um, so we believe in um, a form of techno spirituality, um, a sort of like ancestral technologies. Um, we believe that if the land, if the same resources that we're using to power our computers and power our phones is from the land, then it only makes sense that the, the 
these same places are inhabited because we believe that the land is a resting place for um, all kinds of spirits, including um, our ancestors as well. This is what a lot of um, African indigenous um, spirituality is based on. Um, it's based on the land being the afterlife. So if I'm going to go back and say it again, if the objects that we're, or the resources that we're using to build our laptops and our phones are like cobalt and stuff, then it only makes sense that this resource from the earth is also a resting place for this spirits of nature. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, on this specific web page, um, we have like some form of sacred objects. We have some pots, some trees, and we also have like this guy here, this woodman, this bark boy. And uh, he's inhabited, I feel. Um, I'm kind of disappointed a little bit with how slow my web is loading things. But I'm just going to keep on moving and I'm going to click on his head because he wants us to click on his head. <laughs> um, also, everything on this web page is clickable. Everything that you click is going to take you some, somewhere. Um, so this young man, this wood boy, is going to take us to our lore page. And uh, this is just filled with Jehovah's lore, um, lore that we're trying to build around our music. Um, yeah, we have a couple of entries and uh, I would share more about them, but maybe that's going to take extra time. Um, yeah, so this is the Lord page. I'm going to take us back home and uh, we're going to go to the next portal, which is the performance page, which is showing or showcasing um, our demo or our visualizer for our de demo love created death and uh, yeah pretty self-explanatory click on the YouTube link and uh, watch it <laughs> um, yeah that's generally it um, I'm going to try one last time to see if the explore page is going to lo load the background um, uh, it's not loading the full thing, but five. I have it loaded to over here. Chat for anyone who wants to check it out. Oops, sorry. I think everyone is like seeing my messages right now. I'm going to put it in the chat when I'm done sharing my screen. And uh, yeah, that's all from me for now. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, five. Really cool page. And drop the link in the chat if you want to explore. It's really amazing imagery. A really fun space to, to move around. Um, so yeah, hope you'll... Uh, as we are sharing these sites, a lot of the things we're showing today are, uh, are websites that you could spend a little more time on than, uh, than just the little presentation time slot that we have. Uh, so I encourage you to uh, take a look at some of these links and uh, click around them yourselves as well. Um, up next, we are going to be joined by Alex Beige. Give it up for Alex Beige. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Um, so, yeah, I hope... Okay, yeah, I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get started. So yeah, this is um, not the project that I have listed in uh, the little document, but yeah, this is one of the things that I worked on. Um, so it is a directory of indie theater makers that I know um, and have like met in the last year or so. And one of the things that I learned in meeting all these people over the last year in New York is um, how difficult it can be to like, navigate this indie theater space if you don't know anyone um so yeah i kind of just um met all these people and then like compiled a list of um their sites and what they do and um yeah the hope is just that it like would have helped a past me 
learn what was out there in terms of indie theater. Like all of these people are like collectives of young people with no budget putting up theater work in New York City. And um, yeah, the, the hope is definitely that like this also fosters like more collaboration uh, amongst us. Uh, yeah, so this is the directory that I put together. Um, very fun, very cool. And the other thing that I was working on um, on the site, which is, um, yeah, more so the poetry and also more so the thing I was working on right before this call is this simulator. So um, yeah, let me just reload the page. So um, I haven't like really outsourced the images that I would really want to do the, do for this. So ideally like I could have my friends in this indie theater space like submit their images um, for the shows and then like it could be added to this gallery. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's supposed to like simulate being in the audience so you can just kind of like, um, I feel like I should perhaps mute myself. Um, but yeah, the, these buttons down here allow you to um, really pretend like you're in the audience. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I hope you can hear that. But um, yeah, so that's that's the vibe. And you can um, see these different shows. And yeah, so surely I, um, it's kind of early stages. But yeah, the idea is that it's just like the simulator for you to see these and experience these shows. Um, online and in context, but these buttons allow you to really be in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, that's, that's what I worked on. Um, I was class and yeah, yeah. I, I think that's that's it for my presentation here. And I can share this um, link in the chat. A great segue into my canned applause sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, love that laugh that you chose. To, uh, that had me, had me busting up. Thanks for sharing that cool piece. Up next, we are going to he be hearing from Ange Vang. Give it up for Ange. Hi, everyone. Um, can you see my screen? I'm hoping so. Um, so I'm Ange, just a warning that this project does highlight some more explicit content, but it is text-based, um, and I did remove anything that I felt would maybe be too graphic, but with that being said, um, my project is called Pleasure Gallery. Um, the <laughs> kind of explanation of it is up on the screen. It's a randomizer that cycles through um, a bunch of sex that my friends and I um, have sent or received kind of over the years. Um, and I thought I would maybe just kind of walk through how I made it. Um, again, I removed some of the most explicit ones, but they'll be back up later if you're curious about it. This is kind of what it looks like right now. Um, and I started by sending uh, this submission form to my friends and I had it sent, I had them send it to their friends so that I would kind of have a set of data. Um, and then in the third week of our class, we learned about interactivity and our, um, kind of our homework was to make a website that had a button. And this is eventually what became my final project. So I used our magic eight ball template to kind of build this off of. Um, and eventually I had this, which works functionally the way I wanted it to. 
Um, and then once I had something that functionally worked, my uh, web designer friend and I were kind of discussing ways to make it more maybe visually fun. And this is the design that we landed on um, that he definitely helped me make. Um, and I kind of love where we landed because without context or even with context, honestly, it just looks like two extremely horny people <laughs> texting each other and like not listening to what the other person is saying at all. Um, my friend Ellie also described this project as um, helping democratize horniness, which is kind of, I thought was fun and really all I can hope for. Um, in my work life, I'm mainly an audio producer, and for a time, my job was working as an audio erotica director for a women's sexual wellness app. So I was spending a lot of time thinking about sex, what turns people on. I naturally, I think, became really interested in um, my own relationship with desire and eroticism over time. Um and how we can kind of measure that change. I think sexting is an interesting act where we often kind of negotiate and reshape that relationship to ourselves um, in an environment that hopefully feels more playful and controlled. Um, and so this was kind of my way to think about those ideas. Um, I had never written a line of code up until this class in January. Um, so I'm really thankful for this course. Endless thanks to Todd and Tyler and Kayla because it's uh, really helped me think about a website as a canvas um, for just a way to express um, different ideas. And I never um, would have been able to do that without this course. Um, and I will just finish by uh, reading my favorite one, if it pops up. Um, was thinking it'd be hot to go down on you while you read and then imagined you in glasses like a Nicole Kidman eyes wide shut vibe, but the glasses aren't necessary. Um, yeah. That's me. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Angela. Great one to end on. And amazing data set curated. Uh, really appreciate the, the community effort that uh, that went into that piece. Um, yeah, and, and thank you for the, for the kind words. Really appreciate it. Um, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, so coming up next, we have uh, Isa Sabra. Give it up for Isa. Hello. I have a I have a video walkthrough to share. Like one of those TikTok realtors. Um, so here we'll get into it. Come to my house. This is my crib. Welcome in. Come on inside. Come on in. Come in, take a look around. Come on in. Let's get right to Come on, please. Come inside, make yourselves at home. All right. So the homepage is this sort of clickable floor plan that you can choose any room you want. And then within the rooms, you can navigate using doors and stairs and sometimes holes that are the open to below parts of the floor plan that you could fall into the liminal space. Um, I like making these sort of self-imposed structures to work within and then filling in the hollows with whatever I decide, these like little memories or with my friends. Um, I love hosting my friends in real life and making food for them. So this kind of acts as my virtual home for all my friends, new and old, um, to visit no matter how near or far they are in reality. Um, here's the living room, which is obviously where we played Just Dance on the YouTube TV. Um, the living room has two stairs and two holes. Once you fall into one of the holes, it's, um, you can't navigate via the doors or the stairs. You'll have to use the home button to go back out to the original floor plan. Um, unfortunately, I'm better at remembering facts that would help me on like Jeopardy than remembering memories from my life. So this sort of acts as a way for me to preserve some of those memories, my most treasured facts of my life. 
um, the time that I spend with my friends. This one is a really poignant one that happens every summer in New York, obviously. Um, here's in the bathroom mirror. I tried to draw a cat, but I ended up adding too many whiskers. I got a little out of hand. This isn't the most structurally um, integral home you've ever seen. I also started coding basically during this class. So um, there are ways that it can be better, but you know, that's okay. There's room for additions to the house. There's room for renovation on the rooms. Um, and memory goes hand in hand with impermanence sometimes. So it ends up working out. Here's the office is currently behind on its renovation. Case in point. Here I've edited out the secret just for confidentiality. Um, I know that I'm lacking and I have shortcomings, but I feel like the things that remind me of why I'm loved as a person are my friends reflecting those things back towards me. And so this home acts as a place to put all of my love and memories towards my friends and hopefully open up maybe a guest house for someone else to take over and build on. So yes, this was Missy Manor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Isa. And we really got the uh, the the efficient realtor tour there. There are many of these rooms you can uh, get quite lost in and spend uh, a long time in. So I put the link in the chat. Encourage you all to uh, to spend some time in Miss You Manor. Um, cool. Thank you so much for sharing that, Isa. Um, up next, we have Anshul Roy. Give it up for Anshul. Uh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, so during this class, I was working on a Chrome extension, uh, which I have been building, which works on New York Public Library's digital archives. Uh, and the reason I was working on, first of all, I should give some trigger warning because I would be showing some horrendous images. So if anyone wants to leave, uh, but my main concept in my work is visual ethics in cyberspace. I'm very interested in the idea of how should we look at images of someone's pain on the browser tab. A good example is the image of the dead body of Alan Kurdi, which became a meme. And another great example is this image of someone's assassination, uh, which also became a very viral meme. So I'm interested in the idea of how the contemporary photograph exists as a IMG tag. And because of that, how certain images float around in the cyberspace, losing their gravitas. I think uh, for certain images, we should be very uh, conscious of the context in which we view that image uh, so that they don't lose their seriousness. That's the basic argument of my project. So I'm working with the New York Public Library's digital archives. Uh, and I started this project uh, because I was interested in colonial era photography in India. And I'm looking at this ethnographic book called The People of India, which is one of the world's oldest ethnographic publication. It has typical anthropological images taken by uh, British photographers because they had the purpose of uh, othering and to show people back home the white man's burden of how we need to go and save these people and civilize them and all other things. Uh, and I found this very interesting that New York Public Library was also selling these images as uh, fine art prints. Uh, and I think that this is wrong. I have already I have also talked to the people there in the archive and nothing was actually done. So you could actually technically buy an image of a feminine stricken family as an art print, which surprised me a lot. Uh, and this is not something which is happening only with images from colonial India. This is also happening with images from, let's say, Nazi Germany, in which you can see images of people being hanged, uh, published as art prints. Uh, and I think this is uh, aestheticization of someone suffering by the digital archive, and this is wrong. 
and that's why i made this uh, chrome extension which simply works on the archive by replacing all these div tags with uh, with a custom made image which i have it replaces them with an error message so you cannot proceed further and you cannot consume these images as outprints that's my simple idea with my project it's a very simple code which you could see on github it replaces all those uh, divs with a javascript query uh, and the last point is i'm interested in the idea called electronic civil disobedience this is a term coined by an art group called critical art ensemble uh, the founder of that group, Ricardo Dominguez, is my mentor also. He is a professor at UCSD. And I see this activation of the browser plugin as an act of electronic civil disobedience. It's a symbolic digital gesture, which hopefully makes you think differently about these images. And again, during my class, I was uh, working on some lecture performances. I delivered one lecture performance in St. Louis. I'm giving one next month in London. And hopefully I would also get a fellowship at the New York Public Library because with this work, I have a very clearly well-defined instrumental goal, which is to actually make them change their website. Uh, and that's all from my side. Thank you so much. I'll send the link of the browser plugin in the chat. Thank you so much, Anshul. Really powerful work. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll drop that in the that message in the the plugin in the Twitch chat as well. Um, yeah, and also highlights I think some of some of the things that we're the other applications of the things we're doing in this class. A lot of times we're working on uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, just to kind of create our our own websites. But um, we're learning kind of tools of JavaScript to change things on a on a website using uh, javascript the kind of like scripting language that runs on uh, on the web um but which runs on any web page and so some of the things we might be using like that uh, uh that angela might be using to change the text on on her website that similar line of code could be run on a, another website to to change an image or replace some of the content on a page and uh browser extensions are uh uh, a uh, um, another way of using some of those same technologies we use for websites, but to uh, affect the internet more broadly. And so, th thanks for showing that uh, uh, that Anshul. Um, all right, I'm going to quickly load up. I have a video here from a one of our students who couldn't be here, Liz Tabit, uh, who sent in a video of a, a really amazing custom piece of technology. Let me just. Uh, I should have had this video queued up. But let me see. There we go. All right. Uh, I'm going to load this up here. Hi, my name is Liz. I am uh, coming to you from <laughs> a new uh, recording tool that isn't meant to be a recording tool. So we'll see how this works. Uh, the HTTP Poetics project that I'm sharing today um, is this trickster web server, which is um, a static <laughs> web server that won't give you what you asked for. It's designed um, to sort of be a building block um, where you can build surprising, uh, playful, unstable, and even unusable websites. Uh, the HTML gets to stay the same, but nothing else in your web browsing experience will be the same. So how this um, sort of works behind the scenes is generally, you know, with um, HTML, we add a lot of links uh, to images, uh, sounds, other files, um, links to things. And typically a static web server is responsible for saying, oh, like you've linked to uh, assets cat.jpg. Let me see if I have cat.jpg in a folder called assets and I'll send it back to you. And that's a pretty fa fundamental part of like how websites <laughs> and the internet work. Um, but my trickster web server, when it sees a request for cat.jpg, um, it's not going to send you cat.jpg. 
it'll send you uh, whatever other JPEG it has um, behind the scenes, but it'll tell you that it is cat.jpg. Um, so I'll refresh this page and we'll look at our server logs. Um, so this request, <laughs> request for cat.jpg, uh, the server actually sends us dog.jpg instead. Um, so we end up with these websites that are like kind of unpredictable um, and strange and change uh, randomly every time we view them. And I um, took a stab at like building <laughs> my own <laughs> website on top of this Trickster web server. Uh, this is called Doors to Doors. It is a website full of doors <laughs> um, with links um, and frames to other websites um, or other HTML pages within it. So you can see I've already opened some doors, but we'll open some more doors together. We'll open as many doors as we can before they get perhaps too tiny to open or find. But I think I got it. So what our trickster web server is sort of like doing for us here is um, all of these like links and images are pointing to the same HTML and the same like JPEG, but because our trickster web server is full of tricks, um, we get something different <laughs> every time we open a door. Um, there is something new behind it. Um, and yeah, every time you look at this page, um, all of these doors are open to different things. Um, and yeah, so um, yeah, that's, that's the gist. Um, this is like very much designed to be like used um, and built on by other people. Um, so if you have any interest in uh, building unstable, unusable, playful websites um, where they shift <laughs> as you look at them, um, try out uh, this trickster web server. All right. Thank you, Liz. Very cool piece of technology to come out of this class. Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, in our class thinking about the expectations that we have uh, coming into uh, uh, coming into the internet, like coming into a website. We like what, how you expect a website to work. Uh, what sort of things you expect to see. And we put a lot of energy into thinking about how we could subvert those expectations to something that uh, the someone visiting a website wouldn't expect. And uh, uh, the server that Liz developed is a great way to do that in that it only loads the file that you're not intending to show people. Uh, so it can even make websites that surprise you, which, uh, which is really powerful and cool. Uh, so thanks so much for, for sharing that, Liz. Um, up Next uh, on our presentation list, we have you, Kakinoki. Give it up for you. Hello. I'm not sure if my if my screen shared. I see it. Cool. I think it's hi. Um, it's like three a.m. here in Tokyo, so I might be a bit all over the place. But oh, okay. <laughs> um, the reason why I joined this class was I wrote a poem, and I wanted to like make a game slash website and mix it with a bunch of other things I 
make. So yeah, I'm very grateful for Todd and Tyler. Thank you so much. Um, it says, please put your headphones on to enjoy, but I haven't got to that part, so I'm just going to ignore it. Um, so I wanted to make it as interactive as possible. So I felt like the most intuitive thing you do when you're on the web browser is kind of click when nothing's happening. So it's a bit boring, <laughs> but um, that's the first stanza. And then it loads. Um, here I was thinking of like, love me, love me not flower where you take off the petals. Um, these are images of like felt, like from a felt flower I made. Um, and then it loads again and you go to the next stanza. It's kind of basically about like, I was thinking about like stalking people on the internet and kind of like that obsession fan culture. Um, then it loads again so basically like the stanza that comes up before the page kind of describes what's going on um, this is these are all images I had a phase where I was just screenshotting a bunch of music videos and movies I was watching that had like a electronic devices screen on with some interesting text or images um oh okay then you kind of need to click through um, and then once you get to that one, it takes you to the next stanza. And then here I was thinking, well, it's 12 dots, so it's like 12 months. So when you've thought about someone for a year and then it's like connect the dots um I needed to like put the dots manually and all I could think of was like a high heel shoe so I don't really know <laughs> um, and then the last answer Um, and yeah, these are two photos I took when I was still in London that I really like, and I don't know, I felt like it was, a, it, it felt like it connected to what I was writing about, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, you. That's a really lovely piece. Uh, do you have, I... I tried going to the link you sent me and it's not, it's showing an under construction page. Do you have a, a link we could share with the, the stream? Um, yeah, I, I, I'll send it right now. Yeah, we, we played a lot with, uh, with, with poetry in this class, that some of where my background is, but I think it's also just a, a useful way to explore, uh, explore websites as like a container for a poem and uh using some of the i, th I thought use piece was such a, a great example of some of the ways that we can uh one of the things that we we talked a lot about is like using the techniques of a website to control the way someone reads uh and maybe break people out of some of their typical habits that they have when reading on the internet i know that most of us kind of read things very quickly, kind of eyes darting all around the page, getting the gist, scrolling through. And we kind of like are conditioned on the internet to like always be clicking, always kind of like looking for that next thing to move through, which can make it hard to just read and sit with a piece of text. Um, 
and uh, I think some of we uh, saw some examples there of like making it so you don't see the whole poem at the, on the screen at once. You kind of move through it and you're uh, uh, involved in the creation uh, of it on the screen. And uh, we, I think there were a lot of really cool explorations of that over the course of the class. So glad we got to, to see that one from, from you there. Um, let's see. Oh, does this... Yeah, the... You have this... Uh, boxofdrafts.com is still showing up as under construction for me, but it's not, I wonder if that's because I have a bad cache or something. Oh, wait, no. I keep on sending the wrong boxes. <laughs> oh, no um, problem. Yep, yep. Thank you. So, so that link redirects to boxofdrafts.com, which is still, oh. uh, uh, you, oh, you don't no. need to finish this okay. out live on stream, uh, but I uh, would love Sorry. to be able to share it with uh, the people watching. So if you figure it out before the show is yeah. over, send it back. Okay. Uh, um, great. Thank you again. Uh, let's see. Up next, uh, we are going to hear from uh, Jadel Shafir. Uh, give it up for Jadel. Hey, everyone. Um, go ahead and share my screen. Okay, for this, I was thinking about um, a website in terms of like a place to be um, pensive and just to, to draft thoughts and to, to write something. Um, so, um, yeah, both as like a poetic experience of its own, but also like a place to be um, kind of creative um, and like make something. So, you keep a website as a place where you can draft thoughts and also find inspiration. So this is kind of like a very basic uh, implementation of like that idea. Um, so yeah, you come to this page and it just prompts you to um, uh, put in the name of someone uh, who you want to write to. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, do my past notes. Um, and then uh, in unused shortly, this music starts playing um, and the idea is that you kind of are writing to this song, um, which I am going to mute because I don't own the rights to this music and I don't want it to be, I don't think that Twitch would like that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so this this music just plays and you kind of see um, the lyrics, which you can um, scroll through at your own pace to kind of find um, uh, inspiration that way. So it's kind of you know, experiencing the like poetry of the words, even detached from the music if you want to. Um, and then you've also got this little um, box of prompts that you can cycle through, um, uh, just prompting you kind of like this This website is like a um, like a journal prompter or creative writing class or something. Um, and yeah, you can pull away this, um, these kind of stacks of papers to get to your actual writing. Um, and yeah, I found it really, um, interesting watching other people use it. Um, it was cool watching, um, Todd write a letter to his pet in class. Um, I think it, uh, yeah, just can just like bring out some really sweet experiences, especially um, to the music. So, um, ways I'm thinking of expanding on this are, um, thinking of like persistence. So like a way that people can kind of, um, bring things or, uh, leave the letters that they write on this website, um, maybe in some sort of categories or, or uh, maybe like using like existing ways of, of sending letters. So like letting people mail things off from this website, things like that. Um, but those are kind of the ideas I was toying, toying with. Um, but yeah, so I'll go ahead and write my little letter. Um, Um, but yeah, that's the idea. So if you if you want a website where you can journal or you can write a letter that you're not going to send to someone for whatever reason, um, this is a, a fun way you can do it. And uh, yeah, in 
normally it also cycles through um three different songs like at random so if you also want to hear the the songs that i chose which again i don't have the rights to um then feel free to visit on your own but yeah i can drop the link but that's pretty much it thank you so much Jadel. and i definitely recommend uh we have, I dropped the link in the in the chat. You really get the feeling of it. I appreciate you uh, protecting our uh, our audio abilities on this stream by not getting us muted by playing copyrighted music, you know. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean you can't click on that link and play the music in the in the safety of your own computer uh, if you'd ever like to to write to that page. Um, I think that could be uh, could be really nice. Um, Okay, hello. Uh, uh, how you doing, everyone? We are about at the halfway point of the show. Uh, it's three o'clock. We are halfway through our presenters, and yeah, I just want uh, to make sure. I don't know. I don't know. Coming from the the habit of teaching multi-hour Zoom classes, uh, I recognize it can be hard to stare at a screen for several hours uninterrupted so i'm going to suggest we take a, just a five minute break here uh get up and stretch get a snack big big advocate of of snacks in uh in, in educational settings uh uh yeah stretch your legs and get ready to come back in we'll start back up at 306 et uh so see you in five everyone
Hey, Todd, I think you're muted. Oh, man. Thank you so much, uh, wh whoever said that on the Zoom. Uh, maybe that was Kayla. Uh, uh, hey, everyone. Wow, I'm I'm back. I'm I'm talking to you. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. <laughs> hooray. Uh, man, I I was even thinking to myself, like, wow, I am. This is a particularly smooth transition. Uh, my vocal cadence is very clearly moving us between sections of the show. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I, I guess you, you, you missed some of my. Uh, my earlier transitional content, but I'm just going to share as we're transitioning back in from the mid-show break. Uh, I am wanted to share a, a couple of websites from people that couldn't be here today, uh, but were uh, were part of the class and submitted to the anthology. We'll move through a, a few of these. Um, so I wanted to share this piece from Sarah Slobin, which I'll drop in the chat here. And um, yeah, I, w I won't read uh, too much of it, but it's a, a poem here that we can read through. Yeah, it's that piece. It's a very lovely little little poem to a for a loved one. Um, we we talked a lot in this uh, class about just using some of the the forms, the techniques, uh, what you can do with uh, CSS and uh, and HTML, and how to make that. We like looked at some of the traditions of concrete poetry, the way poets over time have like used the layout on the page, uh, choices in typography and uh, in, in font size and layout and material uh, to, to communicate something with the poem. And uh, that was really nice how uh, Sarah used some of that to communicate things uh, in, her, in her piece. Um, let's see, we also have a piece from Irina Wang here. I'm not 100% sure if I'm, I know how to use correctly, but I will do my best. Please wait a few seconds for models to load. When you see your facial features detected, blink hard a few times to help the camera calibrate to your eye shape. Then, Toggle calibration mode off. I suspect this might work weirdly with the setup I have for streaming. So I'm going to pause out of here and see if I can maybe show that later. Um, another I think one from, oh yeah, this piece from, uh, oh yeah, from Ayaka Takao. Played a lot, I think, with uh, absolute and fixed positioning on websites and making, uh, and drawing from transitions of, uh, of like zines and collages uh, to make these sort of pages that can all link to different things. This one 
connects together a bunch of pages through through dream logic. That piece from Ayaka Takao. Um, we have uh, a piece from uh, Julia Pelosi Thorpe, uh, who works as a, a translator, and we're trying to make a. Uh, and this piece was a uh, translation of Italian into English poetry that translates character by character as you move. And a uh, special shout out to our amazing TAs for the class. Uh, Tyler Yin and, K and Kayla Drizwicki uh, for assisting in putting this piece together. But... If something's left, if something's left of the writing and crying I did for the one, I love my pain will have made sense. Possibly a child who is not alive. Yet we'll see an old migrant story and ruminate briefly over the things nobody felt okay to ever really relate. And some, though some, will be kept couple of poems that are translated this way but yeah i just really appreciate this kind of unique way of reading poems in translation that allows you to really see some of how things are laid out on the sounds in the original language um that's uh i'll share that link here um and i think the other one I was maybe going to share was, oh yeah, Jordan. Uh, this is Jordan's chance piece about the missing Gerard Square egg sculpture, um, a local community icon from their hometown. Uh, so this is pretending to be just a missing egg poster, but as you scroll, eventually it is revealed. a conspiracy website about the egg. When we started the class and we were talking about uh, different kinds of bad websites and experiments in bad website aesthetics, uh, we talked a little bit about like conspiracy websites and the kind of content you would expect on raw HTML text going fully from left to the right. Uh, if you're interested in hatching the truth, I invite you to stop by eggsearch.glitch.me. All righty. Uh, so those and, uh, and more, and many of the ones you, uh, of the websites you have seen already are available on our class anthology at htpoetics-anthology.glitch.me. Uh, I'm going to turn things over to another one of our live presenters now, though. Um, and up next, uh, we are going to hear from Abby Foreman. Give it up for Abby. Sorry, I was muted. Hello, is this screen working? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, I came into this class with a textiles background, um, and I felt I was noticing a lot of connections between the ways that textile drafts are communicated and um, website and HTML is. And so I created a website that combined the two um, and this is exploring a textile structure, a woven structure called a block double weave, where um, each square is a pocket 
that holds in something in between two layers of cloth and the two layers um, intertwine and create intricate patterns like this. Um, I have a little explanation up here of how a uh, double weave works, um, but I wanted to create a website that has a poem or a little story that is in between the pockets of fabric in the double weave. Um, and when you run your cursor over the draft, um, your cursor goes away and you're left to kind of feel out and discover the poem. Um, and then you can go to the other side and see the other perspective of the story. Um, it's a pretty simple website. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think I have much else to say other than encouraging discovery and kind of taking time to unfold each sentence and see how um, the perspectives of each side is revealed through um, the details they notice the other person. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Abby. It's a really cool piece. I remember uh, in class, Abby showed us the the first half of this and uh, then described the their desire to like reflect it back and see it from the other side. So this is also my first time seeing uh seeing the other other side perspective. I'm very uh very excited to see that and uh, looking forward to reading this piece in more detail. Thanks so much for sharing this, Abby. This is a really beautiful piece and it's mechanically playing in a very interesting way to that feels like there's yeah, it'd be very hard to share the text in this way, uh, just on a on print. Uh, that's really great. Okay, um, coming up next, we are going to hear from Alicia Guo. Let's give it up for Alicia. Hello, everyone. Um, let me share screen. Um, yeah, so I had made sites prior to this class, um, a lot of which focused on poetry, but I really loved the idea of what we focused on um, of website making as a practice. And this little site is sort of what I would say is a doodle or a sketch, something without much purpose, just putting um, things on a page. So I'll just go through it. Um, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me, enough to try poetry and cooking and remembering, I know, he loves me, sometimes, maybe, all the time, Tuesdays, the most, I know, he loves me, this much, I'm sure of it. I remember when he bought me flowers, they'll last this long. Roses, baby's breath, sunflowers and daisies, an apology. I have many roles, mender and mended, a memory for you, maintainer, editor of apologies. Don't forget to say I'm sorry, to say I love you, to forgive, to remember, I won't forget. I remember when I made him flowers, fashioned from paper, clay, buttons, code. They'll last this long. He loves me today. I'm an unreliable narrator. There's a different moon for you and me. The sky is my friend. Are we looking at the same sky? I remember when I planted flowers, a gift for you take care of him. He loves me. Yesterday, he texted, what if we took the long way home, traded our bones, pretended this was temporary? I'd love that. He called me while sitting on the ground, a needle in hand, avocado sock in the other. Why don't you buy another? Someone loved enough to wear out the pit. Someone loved enough to learn to sew. He did. He later texts me. I guess in some ways, 
maintenance is like mending. He loves me tomorrow. The tarot card said to think about the story. What do we want to leave behind? To rest, to rest, to rest, to rest. Will you listen? Can you tell me a secret? I'll do the same. Can I tell you a secret? Yes. I will always know, convict, witness of you. Um, so this was sort of like, it felt very much like a doodle as I was making it. And in the end, this is a gift to someone very special to me. So it's sort of like passing him that note. Wow, really amazing work. And I know we we saw that on, on localhost, but it is also available online. Uh, it's included in our, our class anthology. I just dropped the link in the in the chat. Really uh really lovely piece and love seeing the kind of the raw structure of different HTML elements being used to to lay out a poem and, and move through it. That was that's a lovely experience. Thank you for sharing that piece with us. Um, up next, we are going to be hearing from Amber Jetron. Give it up for Amber. Hi, everyone. I think we can see. Yep. Cool. Um, so this website I made was based off the prompt of um, like doing a website with a button that does something like a singular action. And we had in that class tried to attempt something kind of like a skeleton poem where me and someone else were trying to interject and make new pages and kind of make that poetry. And then that made me think of a time where in a poetry class, we did a skeleton poem and th this was the result. And I thought it could be fun to put into a website. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll say just a little bit of the poem, but um, it'd be fun for the person, like for you all to check it out on your own. What's nice about this is the act of interacting with the button and the slowness that you can do, um, which is kind of the opposite of how we tend to use buttons. But um, yeah, it's called The Locals Just Want Goods. Interconnections through life's strands get dissolved through life's teeth. The locals ask, what is left to fill full? My shoes, my hat, the sleeves of my coat. Your shoes, hat, and the sleeves of your coat. What is left to feel full? These are part of the goods that we are told are what makes life good. On the outside, we act as if we must keep our shoes snugly fastened. We act as if this place is not our home. In their home, in their home, in their home too. On the outside, we act as if we must, sorry, <laughs> that's the cool thing about this poem um, on the website is the way it plays with things and re-adds things, but um, reading it is like a different order. But um, yeah, dirty the floors with shoes, shade our eyes. Okay, yeah, on the outside, we act as if we must keep our shoes snugly fastened. We act as if this place is not our home. Dirty the floors with shoes, shade our eyes with hats. Shove the sleeves of our coat into our po pockets. Cut the ties that tie us all together. Untie the laces of your shoe, dear. Say graces. Pick up life strands and let them restrand into their rightful places. The more you put your feet to the earth, the less you need shoes. What is left to go for? Um, yeah, and from there it gets more softer and sweet. But um, what's fun about this this was I tried to make it accessible too. So I played, I checked with VoiceOver, um, which is a assistive technology 
um, where it reads the website for folks who may not be able to fully see a website. Um, and it's cool to hear my computer read the website, read my poem back to me. Um, and that was something that I felt really cool about with making a kind of digital poem is the way it can be interacted with in many different forms and many different ways besides just what um I might have known before. But yeah, thank you so much for this class and this time. And um, it's been really, really hopeful and generative to be inspired by ways we can use the web internet and create and create websites um, and not have to be confined to what we think is just given to us, but being empowered to create our own things. Thank you so much, Amber. Really lovely piece. Yeah. Love the way you move through the different lines and revisit some of the old old lines you were reading. Very cool. Um, okay. Uh, up next, uh, we have uh, with us. So I couldn't get the uh, the website working correctly myself because of my video setup. We're, we're, we're joined by Arena Wang, who is able to be with us in, in real time to uh, to present a piece. Give it up for Arena. Hi. Um, let's hope this works a little bit better. Okay, so um, for my piece, I was really interested in um, exploring the like the idea of looking at someone when their um, their eyes are closed. I think it's like a really intimate act, and both sides of that interaction are really interesting to me. Like the both the like um, not not just looking, but speaking to someone when their eyes are closed. You know their experience of of the event is like they're seeing nothing and they're like they have no visual input and they're just they're just listening to whatever you're saying to them right um and then from from your end it feels like a like i don't know like a it's kind of like reminds me of like yoko ono's cut piece or something you know like you're someone is being really vulnerable to you and you have the power to um to do anything to them um that's that's a real like humbling bit of responsibility. Anyway, um, if you want to join me on this site, um, which is um, maybe Todd can paste the link. Um, if you want to be like a whisperer, you can click this. I'm going to click this one. Please wait a few seconds for models to load. When you see your facial features detected, blink hard a few times to help the camera calibrate to your eye shape. Then toggle calibration mode off. So I start you on this page because um, everyone's eye shapes are different. And I found that sometimes with, with other eye shapes, it doesn't detect like closure correctly. So start here and then. Hi, Irina. Would you like to hear nothing? Close your eyes and I'll whisper you one. So much depends on a red wheelbarrow. Do 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 do, do a nothing received from user number 940. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 940. Cupo would like another snack, please. Was, you are very kind. Uh, the Cupo message was for Todd. When All of love, nothings for now. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. Thank you for watching. Oh. Oh, thanks so much for sharing that. Uh, I will uh, I will pass uh, your recommendation along to Kubo. Uh, I think we have a, a special snack that we haven't given her, so. We'll, uh, Nothing I'll received from user number. <laughs> Just getting uh, a little.
little bit of the audio through here. Um, cool, awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Arena. Um, up next, we are joined by Tim Johnson. Let's give it up for Tim. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Kayla. This has been a lot of fun. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I had fun with all of the prompts and couldn't choose just one to share. We learned how to make sites that would uh, have multiple participants. I made a sentence builder when someone toggles these words randomly, it will affect someone else's sentence. And when you, a user decides that the sentence is worth sharing, the user can click and it will be magically transported over the internet to another participant. I also had fun with hovering this site. It isn't clear necessarily what's going on at any time. Am I me? Am I you? Is the computer me? Is the site? Who, who, who are they? What, what just happened? Uh, we learn to celebrate little systems through the poetics of the web, funny little rules in HTML and CSS and JavaScript that can be leveraged or taken advantage of to make fun little sites. I enjoyed, I don't know if my sound is coming through, but I uh, made a site with some music. And had fun making a site that shows all of the PDFs that I compulsively printed from voraciously reading the news over the past five years with citations and I'm so sad that the class is over but I'm just going to have to sit with it oh no I'm really I'm just gonna have to sit sit with it I, I just uh, no no I, I really need to learn to just sit with it thanks Oh my gosh. I love love seeing a, a fresh one. Seeing a fresh one for the for the final showcase. Big fan of sit with it. Gonna have to use that one for myself. Uh, uh thanks so much for sharing that, Tim. Really appreciate those pieces. Uh many of which you can see in our class showcase. Alright. Moving along we have just three more presenters here uh thank you all uh on the twitch for for joining us for a final showcase really great to have you all here um and uh up next we are going to be joined by jackie lou give it up for jackie hey everyone i'm gonna share the entire desktop um so i came into this class with an existing practice of making websites as art. Um, I think I can get sometimes overwhelmed by thinking of projects that are like very big and ambitious and complicated. Um, so for me, I really enjoyed having like shorter one week prompts as homework assignments and trying to be a little more like light and free with them. Um, one of the weeks, the prompt was to make a website for being together with someone um, online. And for some reason, I thought about seven minutes in heaven um, and making a virtual one. So um, I made a site um, where only two people could go into um, heaven at the same time. 
Um, so I'm going to simulate two people on my desktop. Um, if you enter heaven and no one else is here yet, you see the seven minutes. Um, if someone else joins, um, you can see their cursor um, at the same time as you. Uh, it's kind of hard to demonstrate being one person, but um, there's a cursor that represents like where the other person is. Um, and then you get a timer that counts down seven minutes. And once the seven minutes up, it kicks you both out and you're back in like the, the waiting room area. Um, and then it should be, uh, if, if there's anyone else, um, the heaven door is shut and you can't enter and you have to wait for the seven minutes to finish. Um, and for demonstration purposes, this is um, a different URL than the one I put on the anthology, um, just because it has that constraint of like only two people can be in there at the same time. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think maybe some reflections on creating this. Um, I think it really takes the like being with someone online, emphasis on like the just being. Um, it's kind of interesting to see um, how to make interaction, uh, interacting with someone as simple as possible and like pared down um, and like minimal. Um, and I never experienced this game growing up um, myself. So this is my very naive and wholesome web-based interpretation of it. Um, cool, yeah, thank you, Todd, Tyler and Kayla and everyone else in class. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jackie. Uh, and you can find the official Seven Minutes in Heaven link in our class anthology. Uh, of course, for Jackie's presentation, we didn't want to just be locked out of an occupied heaven, but you could have that experience yourself uh, if you uh, if you visit our, our class anthology and find Jackie's page. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, up next, we have Banyi Huang. Give it up for Banyi. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for sharing. I really enjoyed looking at everyone's projects um, and seeing like the really different cool things that you can do with it. Um, I came into this class, well, like, well, I guess what I mainly do is creating 3D imagery um, and doing kind of like uh, with like rewriting mythology and um, building worlds. So it's been really cool to um, let me share a screen. Um, it's been really cool to uh, explore website making as kind of a repository to um, house all of that different information, um, images and things that I've collected. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. So my project is called Triadic Patterning. Um, it's like, so it's, it's really coming from this interest I have in um, like, how can we be spiritual now as like, um, as a diasporic person and uh so yeah and then the this character that i have here so it's like uh this temple that i've built is it's called the temple of perversion so in chinese like perversion also uh means transformation it's like the different stages that, that an insect may go through um the different changes so it's like um yeah so to enter here and um everything is in progress so it's like this is like uh this temple layout that i made um it's kind of based on this Taoist temple i visited um returning home to china and um we have an information kiosk um yeah uh because of limitation of time, I'm just gonna read. Uh, it's like a few questions that I'm interested in 
it's like yeah it's like how we relate to deities from mythology and folklore when there's a severing from the diasporic culture of origin what does it mean to build a practice of worship using digital tools that, that are available um and so yeah i'm exploring these uh deities and they each have their own functions a lot of it is about like it's like the need to see and to be seen desire to listen and to be heard um it's about like protection care and integrating the senses so you're invited to map these things and these senses in the temple of perversion um uh okay so there's like a theater I'm imagining the theater is sort of like this place where you get the backstory of um, the deities. Um, so yeah, I guess this website is kind of a collage of the different exercises that we did during class. Um, yeah, and uh, this one is like, it's like absolute positioning. Um, uh, so like there are some hover things where you can explore their backstory it's a bit of sound back to the temple um um so yeah you see a lot of um it's like in incense burners in temples so here's like uh, burning is cleansing you can let go of any thoughts uh, emotions that aren't serving you um I'm just using an iframe uh, from, this is like a 3D scan I uploaded to Sketchfab. So yeah, you can deposit any rubbish inside of here. Um, and uh, anyway, so there's a lot of links inside of here that you can explore. Um, this is one of the deities that I am working on. Uh, it's called so Tianlian, a thousand mile eye. Um, so I'm interested in kind of like the senses that they're mapping out. So like this this deity is um, is about seeing and um, being seen. And um, and um. Yeah, I don't think I would have time to go through all of them, but there's like kind of these character monologues uh, that gives that give a sense of like how they are. Um, and uh, where you can line it in sense. Oh. It's going very slow. So this is like, uh, I guess you can do it um, if you want to meditate on um, how you see and want to be seen. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of other things. Yeah, I think I'm going over time, but it's like, uh, you can also do some meditation here. Um, some sounds. Anyways, yeah. I'll stop sharing. Awesome. Thank I'll you. drop a link in here if any of y'all want to explore further. Yeah. And I, I put a link on the stream as well. Thank you so much for sharing, Vani. Uh, and yeah, Vani's piece, there's like a, it's a big floor plan to explore. So I definitely recommend getting lost in there, hearing some of the sounds. Um, 
for the cool space. Thank you, Vanyi. Uh, and I think we are up to our final presenter uh, to close us out. Let's give it up for Dylan Baker. Hello. Um, let me find the right window to share. Um, so most of my sites were pretty small. Um, so I'm just going to poke through like a couple of them. Um, something that like really struck me with this class was like trying to capture just like moments and emotions as like a sort of using code as like a sketch pad because I code for my day job. Um, and so like for the first site, I was like, man, you know what needs a fan page? Facebook.com, my favorite website, um, because I had just had a weird experience with like my high school biology teacher wishing me a happy birthday, you know, a zillion years after high school. Um, it just made me feel weird. Um, or like some song lyrics that were really striking me in a moment. And I just discovered um, in the class Hot Glue Me as a way of making sort of collage based websites. Um, and it was just really fun to be so sort of scrappy and playful with like web as a as a medium. Um, so I went through all of the lyrics of this song and tried to capture just how like feral uh, it made me feel. Um, but um, my like final piece, the one I spent the most time on is um, like my goal, I think similar to the sort of seven minutes in heaven piece was to like create a really intimate experience um, there was this, uh, my friend had brought up this like Vonnegut quote um, that was like, there were these uh, creatures in this one Vonnegut novel that was like the harmoniums that can like have really weak telepathy and they can only communicate two things to each other. Um, and each one is an automatic response to the other. And the two things are here I am, or I am here and so glad you are. Um, and that really, um, I think it's here I am, but I felt like I am here felt more sort of like I wanted it to feel really intimate. And so I made this website where um, you like can type those two phrases and it just toggles back and forth endlessly. Um, and whenever you type, I have it open um, in two tabs, you can see, uh, yeah, the text that other people are typing. Um, and if you like, are trying to type at the same time and type letters that aren't in this phrase, it, it sort of resets. So if you're on it with somebody, it has to be kind of collaborative. Um, and I tried like a million different things on this um, and ultimately tried to keep it super simple because it was really just trying to do one thing. Um, and at the bottom, if you scroll down, it just has like a ledger of the last five times anybody toggled between the two um, sides. And yeah, it was really like technically super interesting and fun and I learned so much. Um, but yeah, this is this is my final piece. Love to float back and forth on this on this piece for a little bit. I always get a little lost in it every time we take a look at it. So thank you for sharing that, Dylan. Uh and maybe some of our, our friends in the audience can be here with us, and we are so glad they are. Um, well, thank you so much, everybody. That's going to be the uh, the end of our show. And, uh, yeah, I, I just uh, want to remind you one more time about our HTT Poetics Anthology, where you can find most of the pieces that we, uh, we saw today. Uh, would love for you to uh, to check those out. Of course, on this uh, page as well, you can see some of the very unique uh, structure. Everyone kind of designed their own little div to uh, be the home for their website as well. Uh, so really, uh, we're all kind of co-designers of this uh, chaotic website. Appreciate you uh, checking that out. Um, I also just want to give one final plug here to some of the new classes we have going up at SFPC this summer. Again, applications close next Monday, April 15th. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of through lines uh, kind of jumping off what we were just talking, or what we've been talking about in this class. So if you're interested in some of the things we, uh, we saw today, um, 
if you're interested in working more with language uh, and uh, especially like generating language and working with uh, prepared sets of texts, uh, human scale natural language processing with Alison Parrish might be a good fit. If you're interested in working with images and specifically how images live online, um, might be interested in perfect pictures with uh, Molly Soda, also with our wonderful uh, assistant teacher Kayla. It's also going to be assistant teacher for that class. Uh, we're going to have worlds in conversation with Everest Pipkin, who is a uh, a, a very uh, prolific creator of uh, websites and many other kinds of uh, digital electronic art, uh, as well as analog materials. And this one's going to be more on tabletop storytelling games, but Everest has a, a kind of rich history in making uh, websites that uh, that have a uh, a like strong narrative world to them if that's a, an area you'd be interested in. Um, instructional intimacies with Maria Mona Lisa Garavi is a uh, kind of like more experimental writing class and kind of like taking inspiration from uh, from Fluxus and other like instructional based artworks. Um, they're going to be uh, experimenting with some different techniques with machine learning and generative AI and working on creating uh, kind of language based pieces uh, through that. So uh, we, uh, if that's a thing that's interested you, that might be a good fit. And then we have the Musical Web, our most specifically website-focused class. Uh, if you're really interested in making websites to play music, musical instruments that live on websites, and all the different ways you can play with sound online, um, that would be a, a cool class to apply. So just want to plug those uh, plug those real quick. And then uh, I guess as a way to sign us off, uh, I can uh, share with you a way we signed off the class, uh, which is a, a little website based on a demo I made to kind of show the class how to uh, to use WebSockets and, and networking and uh, how you can communicate, how you could press a button on one screen and have something happen on another. Um, so I'm turning off my desktop audio so this doesn't go through on the stream. Uh, but I'd like you all to join me here on strongbowclerk.glitch.me uh, where if you hit the music button, you will hear a copyrighted song. And then uh, that'll, that'll sign us out. So thank you so much, everyone, on uh, on Twitch for joining us. All right. Thanks, everybody. It's been a really fun show. Thanks so much for spending some of your Saturday with us. I'm going to sign off now. Take it easy, everybody.